We are continuing our journey in Kyrgyzstan. Today is the final meeting with this amazing country. In the previous episode, we had a great time at the southern coast of Isakul, learned how to put up a tent, tried to guess mythical animals at the bizarre relief of the Kenyan fairy tale, and tried on the role of the Kyrgyz warriors. We fought, and now we should rest. Today we will have another exciting adventure. We will visit a piece of the most ancient Kyrgyz architecture, the Burana Tower. Inhale the fresh air of the high mountain valley of Su Samir and pray in the sacred place where the Kyrgyz Batir Manas is buried. Sounds interesting? Then join us! Let's start the episode with a visit to the small but glorious city of Tokmok. Tokmok was founded as a Kokan fortress at the beginning of the 19th century, but in 1862 it was conquered by Russian troops. The city did not go without a fight, its residents fought so fearlessly that nobody could take the city until it was destroyed. A new fortress on the ruins of Tokmok was founded two years later. Tokmok is located on the left bank of the Chui River and since 2003 it has been the administrative center of the Chui region. The capital of Kyrgyzstan, Bishkek, is just 60 kilometers away from Tokmok. They say that if it weren't for the flood threat, Tokmok could easily claim capital status. An amazing fact, there are several airplanes in Tokmok despite the fact that there is no airport in the city. This is explained by the fact that during Soviet times there was a large air base with a runway. Now the runway is used for karting championships. What makes Kazakh and Kyrgyz people relatives? It is Manabi. In the first half of the 17th century, that hero led the Kyrgyz and Kazakh troops which fought against the Jungarian invaders. According to historians, the decisive battle took place in 1625 on the banks of the Ili River, where the Jungars were defeated and forced to retreat to Siberia. During the battle, Manabi was seriously wounded and died. In 2009, a monument to Manabi was erected in Tokmok. But there is another attraction near Tokmok, thanks to which the city is known all over the world. It is Burana Tower. We'll go there. If anyone asks what is the oldest building in Central Asia, the answer is Burana Tower. If you do not believe us, just Google it. Burana Tower is a famous architectural monument included in the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The tower is located 12 kilometers away from the city of Tokmok. So now we are at the Burana Tower. Initially, this tower reached about 40 meters in height. But after an earthquake in the 15th century, its height was almost halved. Although if I were now climbing that 40 meter tower, I would have been going up there for about 20 minutes. Now I'll climb quickly. Let's see what's inside. The word Burana has nothing to do with a Buran, which means snowstorm. It actually translates as minaret. Archaeologists have established that the tower was built in the first half of the 11th century. Similar buildings were erected near the cathedral mosques. The top of the tower was crowned with a lantern dome so that trade caravans along the Silk Road could navigate in the dark. It was also used as an observation tower. From the highest point of the minaret, the approach of the enemy could be seen. A strong earthquake that occurred in around the 15th century destroyed the upper part of Burana. Today, the height of the tower is 21.7 meters. The tower exists for 10 centuries. They say that is because of the fact that foundation is made of stone and goes deeper than 5 meters. Okay, enough history. Let's go upstairs. All right, just a little. No, 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 no. It's already closed. 
But wait, downstairs it's said that everything here works until 5 p.m. Therefore, if you come here, be sure to calculate the time and be in time before closing. Well then, I will not have claustrophobia today. Till? The entrance directly to the tower is located on the south side. The metal staircase appeared here in the 70s of the last century during the restoration. Our Kyrgyz friends provided video materials of the interior of the tower. So what's inside? From the entrance to the top of the minaret, there is a spiral staircase with steps made of baked bricks and covered with juniper boards. This staircase is quite narrow. It is difficult for one person to walk along it. The top of the tower offers a beautiful view of the hill fort and mountains. Since we could not go upstairs, we can observe it only from a metal observation deck. The view is really mesmerizing. If you combine the fairy tales of Rapunzel and Sleeping Beauty, you get one of the legends that surrounds Burana. We only switch kings to Khans, a spindle to a black spider, and a fairy to a stargazer. Only the tower, built specifically so that the precious daughter was away from dangers next to the sky, remains unchanged in the story. According to the legend, the girl lives happily in the tower until her 16th birthday and on her birthday she dies from the bite of a spider, whom the Khan father accidentally brought along with fruit. As they say, you won't get away from fate. While we were studying the ancient minaret, it got dark, but we could not deprive ourselves of the pleasure of walking around the cemetery. You know, of course, I have been in many places in my life, but never expected to come here. This is just something new for me. Previously, there was the capital of Karakanids, Balasagun, and there was a very lively trade. And now, there is only silence and Balbali. The Burana Tower and the Burana Fortification are the ruins of the ancient city of Balasagun the capital of the Karakhanids, one of the most powerful states that existed in Central Asia and Southern Kazakhstan in the 10th, 13th centuries. Balasagun for its time was very technological, look at water supply system from clay pipes. The city is also known as a cultural center. Yusuf Balasaguni, the founder of Turkic written literature, lived here. In the era of the Mongol conquests, Balasagun surrendered without a fight. Thanks to this, the city was not completely destroyed and was called Gobalik, or Good City. However, already in the 14th century, the city began to die and finally ceased to exist due to the plague epidemic. The hill fort and the Burana Tower are all that remain of the Karakhanid headquarters. All this territory is now a museum complex. But if you put aside all the mysticism and return to feminism, I can say that there are too many male sculptures and almost no female ones. My inner feminist is unhappy. Not. Let Aziza continue to insistently examine the ball balls for their gender. We have a minute left to broaden our worldview. Ancient monuments were not always standing here. Ball balls are collected on the ancient Turkic burial grounds of the Chui Valley. Isukul region and the Ten Shine. In total, there are 80 sculptures. Such sculptures are common in the territory of northern Kyrgyzstan in the habitats of nomadic Turks. These sculptures are monuments with facial features, headdress, jewelry, hairstyle, and weapons depicted on them. In fact, these stone statues are portrait images of the once living Turks, a kind of ancient photographs. Our time in the ancient city has ended. We will have a long road to the highland plain of Su Samir. Follow us using the hashtag Across Central Asia. We rode for about seven hours from Burana to Su Samir and felt what it means to live in a country most of which consists of mountains. If you'll go there, be patient. Imagine that you are at the altitude of 3200 meters above sea level. 
overboard is only 6 degrees with a dense fog. We moved very slowly and carefully given the large number of sharp turns. The road to Su Samir passes through the picturesque Tor Ashu Pass. Tor Ashu is a key part of the Bishkek Osh Highway connecting the north and south of Kyrgyzstan. An interesting structure that surprises us at the very top of the pass is a tunnel inside the mountain a little over two kilometers long. The construction of the tunnel in the highlands became a unique phenomenon which at that time had no analogues in the USSR. In the Soviet newspapers, that construction site was called the Great Kyrgyz Route. Tunnels and avalanche galleries on the Bishkek Su Samir Osh Highway were built by Moscow Metro construction specialists. The first high altitude tunnel in Central Asia was commissioned in 1964. The tunnel is named after Kyrgyz engineer Kusain Kolbayev. The tunnel is kind of creepy. It seems that we were in the scenery of a horror movie. I had to go with my eyes closed. How the driver deals with fear, we do not know. Su Samir is a small valley with a length of 150 kilometers, which is located between three large ranges of the northern Tian Shan Kyrgyz, Su Samir Tuo, and Jumgal Tuo. Top and shape, the valley resembles a triangle. From ancient times, it was considered a fertile place. It was through it that the Great Silk Road passed. What was the Silk Road for our ancestors and what is it for today's tourists? We asked Aijan, participant of the expedition, about this. If we go back to history, the Silk Road united the whole world through trade. I believe that this is a great opportunity to attract tourists in the future. What is the Silk Road for me? After the expedition, my view changed, of course. My interest in this topic has increased. And the truth is, many things happened during that trip. Now I want to expand my knowledge. The valley is located at the altitude of 2200 meters above sea level. Its length is 100 kilometers from the west to east. The width in its widest part is about 40 kilometers. Snow cover lasts up to 160 days a year, reaching a maximum thickness of 70 centimeters. The Su Samir Valley, protected by high mountains, has a unique microclimate, which is favorable for winter sports. I cannot tell you a lot about Su Samir because I wasn't there before, but I know that a lot of my friends go there for free riding. They arrange cool tours. There are awesome tracks and cool slopes there, and I think that I'll definitely go there myself. Su Samir is a real paradise for free riders. The valley has huge snow fields without obstacles, two meters deep snow and the most diverse relief of mountain slopes, including rocky ledges. And the main advantage of the valley is that Su Samir is suitable for skiers and snowboarders with different levels of training. The valley has two ski resorts, Su Samir and Tor Ashu. Heli ski programs are also taking place in the Su Samir Valley region. It looks like this. A person is thrown by helicopter into the mountains where it is impossible to quickly climb another way. Backcountry is also very popular. This is a pedestrian climb to the remote slopes and peaks with further skiing or snowboarding along the wild tracks. For heli skiing and backcountry classes, skiers should be well trained. So do not try such adventures without proper preparation.
But this is all winter fun. We arrived to Sioux Samir in August, so we asked how the opportunities of the valley are used in the warm season. If you like flying and beautiful mountain views, you need to visit Sioux Samir in the summer. At this time of the year, the sport is very popular among paragliders. The main starts are located on the southern slopes of the Kyrgyz Ridge. Why exactly this place? Flight routes are well explored along the ridge. There are mild weather conditions and a stable atmosphere. All this, coupled with a developed infrastructure, make paragliding in Sioux Samir unique and comfortable. The valley wakes up from winter sleep later than other regions. In May there is still snow. In general, throughout the summer, Sioux Samir is quite fresh and cool. We arrived late at night, the temperature was only 8 degrees. Many members of the expedition decided to sleep in tents, but Aziza chose to spend the night in the car, taking a sleeping bag with her. In the morning during breakfast, we were able to witness the beauty of the valley. In the summer months, the valley is covered with large grass. So many shepherds come here to graze cattle on summer pastures. Here they are called Jailo. While riding, we met shoals of horses grazing peacefully along the road, flocks of sheep with friendly herdsmen, herds of fat cows driven by four-legged shepherds. On the roadsides, pastoralists sell homemade livestock products, iran, kumis and kurt. It is believed that in Sioux Samir, you can try the best kumis in the country. The valley has youth hotels and kumis hospitals where you can stay and enjoy the silence, stay out of civilization. Locals always welcome travelers. Kyrgyz people are very patriotic. On the way, we twice noticed the state flag. In the first case, it fluttered over the yurt. In the second, it was painted with red paint on the mountain. It's great when people love their country so much. We leave the hospitable Sioux Samir Valley and head to the mausoleum of the great Kyrgyz hero Manas. We will expand your knowledge in Kyrgyz language. The word Gumbez means mausoleum. We arrived at the complex, which includes the Gumbez of Manas Batir. Look at it from the top. The Kyrgyz National Complex Manas Odo is located 13 kilometers from the city of Talas in the village of Tasharik. Talas district, Talas region. Until 1996, Manas Odo was called the Reserve Museum Manas. And in 2001, the status of the Kyrgyz National Complex Manas Odo was officially assigned to it. The epos Manas is included in the Guinness Book of Records as the longest poem in the world. It is 20 times larger than Homer's Odyssey and Iliad and 2.5 times longer than the Indian epic the Mahabharata. The epos bears the name of its main character, Manas, who managed to unite disparate tribes. In general, the work reflects the centuries-old struggle of the Kyrgyz people for their freedom. Epic Manas is a great monument of Kyrgyz literature. And now we are in the place where the hero of this epic, Manas Bate, is buried. Somewhere there, 200 meters from here, is his mausoleum. Gumbez of Manas is located at the foot of a low cone-shaped mountain called Karol Choku on the banks of the Kenkol River. According to the legend, Manas Bate loved to watch the surroundings from the top of this mountain as it can be seen from here for many kilometers. Remember, we told that the Burana minaret was used precisely for these purposes. Apparently, Manas thought, why should we build a viewing tower if there is a ready-made natural analog? It is noteworthy that the Kyrgyz consider almost one and a half kilometer mountain as low one. This is what it means to live in a mountainous country. 
We also loved another fact. On the top of the mountain, there was a flag very similar to Kazakhstan, gold on blue. Apparently, this is a camp standard of Manas. You know, I'm always amazed how people at that time created such beauty. On the other hand, they did not have the internet. They didn't surf Instagram for hours. And now we have the opportunity to see such a wonderful work. By the way, they say that these walls reach about a meter wide. And they were also made by masters from Samarkand, where, by the way, we will soon go. So I'm looking forward to see such beauty everywhere. The walls of the mausoleum will amaze everyone. They are made of well-fired red bricks. The ornaments and patterns on the walls are striking in their diversity. You can see geometric ornaments and patterns of plant look. According to scientists, the Gumbaz of Manas was built by specially invited masters from Bukhara, Samarkand and Kashgar. All this is wonderful, but there are sources that say that this Gumbaz does not belong to Manas, but it is the tomb of the 14th century feudal lord's wife, Kanize Katun. Although they say that he was not buried there at all, and all this was done to distract the enemies of Manas, even the sign says the emir's daughter is buried here. We are unable to read unfamiliar texts in mirror image. I had to ask scientists for help. The inscription reads, This magnificent tomb of a virtuous, chaste fourth pillar of the era, the most famous of the wives, Kanize Katun, daughter of the Emir, an excellent, revered, respected source of generosity and mercy, the winner Emir Abuk. Is all of this a lie? We are at an impasse, and we found a man who helped us solve the riddle. В этом мавзолее на самом деле похоронен именно Манас, просто его жена Канекей. Actually, Manas was buried in this mausoleum, and his wife Kanikei was buried here to hide him from enemies. So she hides the body of Manas. On the upper side of the tomb there is a body of the woman and the remains, all kinds of women's belongings. Why? Because according to the legend of our Kyrgyz history, in order to take revenge, the enemies abused the body of the deceased Bater. Well, with such motives, she thus hides the body of Manas below at a depth of 8 to 9 meters. And in the upper part, as I said, there is the body of a woman. Manas was lucky with his thoughtful wife, Kanike. She not only hid the body of Manas under the body of another person, but also spread rumors that the body of the Batir was buried far from settlements, near some cave. No one knows the truth. Scientists came to the conclusion that this mausoleum belongs to the architectural monuments of the Great Silk Road and dates to the 14th century. Up to 140,000 tourists visit Gumbaz annually. And it's not only foreigners, the Kyrgyz people revere Manas as a saint. Newlyweds often come here to receive a blessing. At the mausoleum, pilgrims read a prayer. We also decided to join. We asked the guide a direct question why people love Manas so much. And we got a direct answer. Well, because it is probably the most important national heritage of our entire Kyrgyz Republic. The Manas Odor complex is large and very interesting. We managed to get around only a part of it. We recommend you to see the Icon Manas Monument, go to the museum and take a walk through the Manas Atar Park. In summer, the whole territory is surrounded by greenery and flowers. Kyrgyzstan left us a good last place to visit. So what did we do in 25 minutes? We found out which historical person from Tokmok connects the Kyrgyz and Kazakhs, saw the oldest building in Central Asia, the Burana Tower, found out where heliski programs are conducted in Su Samir and investigated the history of the burial of Manas. And we saw once more that the Kyrgyz are very devoted to their country. We wish development and prosperity to Kyrgyzstan. 
And now, we move on. Our adventures continue in southern Kazakhstan. See you soon.